Thank you, Tim, for the introduction. So um, it was a little bit misleading on the uh, uh, on, on the agenda. I'm uh, not c uh, not working at CERN. I'm at KIT, Karlsruhe Institute of Te Technology. We are working closely together with with CERN since we are running uh, the ter the German tier uh, tier one for for this uh, for the large hadron collider at CERN, and together with my uh, three. Colleagues, I have written this, uh, this talk about moving towards IPv6 only in the German tier one data center of the Large Hadron Collider. Okay. Um, the, uh, a few words about the uh, LHC, about the LX, LX, uh, accelerator. Um, this is an um, underground construction, 80, uh, 80, 80 meters, 80 to 100 meters under underground. There's a ring with a diameter of approximately 20 kilometers. And there, in there are particles uh, accelerated close to light, light speed. And there are four experiments or four big experiments. This is CMS, LHCB, Atlas, ALICE, uh, which are having detectors placed there. And uh, they are detecting what uh, what happens if the uh, um, um, if the particles running together r colliding uh, and um, already in 2000 uh, this was when uh, the designment was uh, was done of how the uh, um, LHC will look like was the decision taken that uh, it shall be not one computing center uh, at CERN, it shall be a distributed computing center. And this is the birth of the uh, uh, world uh, Worldwide Large Hadron Collider computing grid, in short, uh, WLCG. And for uh, for this computing engine, you need a network. And uh, there was then the, uh, in uh, the beginning of uh, the 2000 years, in 2003 was the first meeting where a group of people came together for uh, a first uh, um, assignment of the uh, so-called LHC OPN. This is a VPN, a star-based VPN, where are the tier ones connected to, uh, to CERN. And uh, DEKIT, this is the German tier uh, tier one, uh, is one part uh, part of it. And uh, we are currently connected with two times 100 gigabit to uh, to CERN, and we have a few more uh, connectivities. Um, come on, uh, a few words about uh, about our center, about uh, Gridka. Uh, we have uh, a little bit above uh, 40,000 uh, 40, uh, compute cores where are parallel jobs running. This is not a high performance computing. This is our, these are independent systems and the jobs are running independently. Um, and we have, uh, compared to, to Meta, it's probably small, uh, 100 petabyte online, uh, online storage uh, where our uh, the uh, CERN data are um, uh, held in, and we have a uh, tape storage which is at the moment 85 petabyte large, and with the current tape uh, storage, it can grow 235 petabyte. And uh, a next tape storage is already uh, uh, in. Uh, we are already working on on it. Uh, at least on the paper, uh, and this will probably double the size of the storage what we have. Um, and then we have a little bit on uh, networking, which are connecting us to to the world. These are the two times hundred gigabit I mentioned already to CERN, and uh, another four hundred gigabit, which are connecting us to the uh, internet. We are two different service providers. So, um, uh, the uh, HEPIX IPv6 working group, where I, uh, we are involved in since the beginning of this working group, is pestering us with uh, setting up an IPv6 only testbed. And we were, we were looking at, uh, at this and thought, well, what do we need for this? We need worker node installation process, we need GSCPv6, DNS, and so on. And this all doesn't work at our end. So we, we were 
pretty sure that we had uh, that none of those services will will just work out out of the box, and we had uh, lots lots of uh, lots of work to do before this uh, this will anyhow uh, will somehow be uh, able to to run at our end, and. Then we thought, no, we are not going this path, we are going a slightly different path. We are moving our complete uh, worker node farm towards, uh, towards IP, IPv6. And what we need for this? Monitoring. So we built a monitoring system which is capturing every job which goes between the worker node to the ad job, administ uh, job submission, to the administration, to the storage, and everywhere else where worker nodes are communicating to. <coughs> um, for, for this, we installed a packet beat at, uh, at, at each wor worker node. Um, <coughs> we and, uh, then uh, there is Logstash pushing the, uh, the data to open search. Uh, for storing, uh, we have Kibana, but a very basic Kibana, uh, which uh, just gives us a possibility for visualizing what's there in the in the database. Um, and we started with a very small subset of our worker nodes, um, and at this time we could uh, uh, store the data quite long t long term. And uh, today uh, we have um, um, enlarged the monitoring environment over our comp complete compute node farm and uh, but there this has the disadvantage that we have only half uh, half or close to a week uh, which we have the ability for storing the data uh, since the database should not exceed half a terabyte um, uh, but this uh, this database and this monitoring is quite quite useful since we see every uh, packet what what is still on the protocol uh, IPv4. A snapshot of uh, September 2002 last last year, there we had already uh, quite a fraction of um, IPv6. It was not not half the package packages what we uh, what we have seen. Um, but uh, um, if we look to the incoming traffic, this was quite more IP, IPv4. Uh, the outgoing traffic uh, was quite substantial already IP, IPv6, since by this time our uh, compute node farm were already dual stack running, um, and. Um, we thought, well, we are quite safe since it's dual stack, so we have IPv4, IPv6. But then we discovered NTP, NTP, and it's completely IPv4. Uh, and um, but not only that is only uh, that is completely IPv4. We have there quite some curious names like uh, Telesto. Hot. Chili. Net. Um, l like uh, radio-sunshine.org, what does this have this have to do with uh, with NTP? And uh, we were quite uh, quite uh, curious and were di digging in there to see if there someone is uh, doing something nasty with uh, with the NTP uh, protocol or with the NTP port. Um, we, were we were looking then deeper and found that these are different uh, different processes like Java, Root, and Curl, and uh, the uh, the the counts on the processes were not matching with the uh, with the amount of uh, NTP requests what we uh, what we saw, and uh, so we were investigating further and found at the end. This is one of the CERN experiments. Uh, they are they are asking NTP.org, and NTP.org has a big database, and all those names which are there on the NTP server, they are, they are coming out of the NTP.org database. So we thought, well, issue solved. They have uh, an NTP.org. They are quite uh, quite caring about uh, those servers which are in their database. Um, the next step wa thing was that we had uh, a Dcache is an 
um, is our s storage environment where our all the high energy physic physicists have their uh, their data registered and uh, um, we had there an upgrade of the DCAS version to a new version and with this uh, version you see that um, that on our two border routers what we have for the uh, installation um, if you look there a little bit closer that you see that the traffic is m moving from the uh, right hand upper IPv4 protocol to the lower lower left uh, from the left hand uh, IPv4 protocol to the right hand IPv6 protocol this is uh, LHC1 um, and the LHC OPN it is even much more obvious that it uh, that the traffic was moving from the upper part to the lower part uh, and from the IPv4 protocol to the IPv6 protocol. And this was just the update uh, of the um, um, of the Dcash, uh, Dcash system while it had uh, four, uh, f uh, four uh, IPv6 improvements within the uh, um, Dcash environment. This is our monitoring. We had uh, Ganglia and uh, the uh, Ganglia system we decided not to bring over towards IPv6. We installed their um, open, uh, open search as a database and uh, with Kibana and Grafana for the visual visualization. One advantage of this is, uh, or one of the advantages is that is the separation of database and uh, visualization and of the data. While it was before uh, Ganglia, it was all in uh, in one uh, application, uh, the database and the visualization, and with uh, with the new new database, you have much more flexibility and m much more possibilities for uh, representing uh, the the data. This is and uh, so Ganglia is uh, dying with IPv4 and with the new system we have IPv4 and IPv6 deployed simultaneously. Then I was looking to Logstash and in the first, uh, I in the first uh, two items I thought well we are going much towards IPv6 but uh, the last uh, uh, look at uh, Logstash was that uh, there is still quite a lot, quite some work to do. So we are not not there yet. Um, have to look at, th at this, or it's still some is pending. Then I was looking to our DNS environment, and since our worker nodes are dual stack already, and our um, resolver is dual dual stack, I thought well. Mm, What's this that we have uh, only a very small number on IPv6 uh, packets while the majority is still IPv4? Yes, there is a file on each worker node called resolve.conf and if you have in resolve.conf in the first line the IPv4 address of your resolver, it's never going towards IPv6. So we uh, we change this uh, this lines uh, that it uh, that we are sure that the first lines are IPv6 and the uh, second lines and only IP, uh, IPv4. And uh, we had, uh, but this was not only to change this lines. We had to reprovision uh, the the worker nodes for for taking this then in account. Um, but we have already uh, quite a high number on IPv6 packets now ex exchanged between the resolver and the uh, worker nodes. But it's still a little bit to go where we have to still work to do for resolve the other bit. Then we have uh, some administrative services. We, we started uh, building Rex in 2001. And there we had at each rack a REC manager uh, which was responsible for for the rec that uh, the uh, uh, each worker node has resolved has got an address. The rec manager runs the NTP service for for the rec. Uh, it was an as as the, the an remote syslog was running there. The monitoring, the gmon D monitoring for the Ganglia monitoring was running at the rec manager, and the DHCP service was running there as well. 
but today they they are in the process of getting a dual stack and set up at each worker uh, at, at each rack manager and um for the deployment process we have a uh, red hat uh, uh, satellite server foreman running and um we we use this uh, foreman not only for the uh, control uh, controls for the kickstart installation we are DS dhcp pxe uh, it provides a red hat subscription service uh, yum repo uh, repositories and a certificate cert certificate authority and an encryptor for uh, for puppet and uh, then we have uh, uh, so-called uh, capsules running these are modular architecture which offers a tftp server um, it offers puppet master and pulp for um, uh, for software repository management and we have a dns uh, a s service running for the first uh, address uh, um, resolution and a uh, DHCP server. And uh, with the DHCP server, we will have quite some fun since um, the DHCP v6 capsules are not available at the moment. And we are, uh, um, and uh, Red Hat seems to have this not even on their uh, long time roadmap. So um, we're not we have not uh, not a real uh, real idea where where to go there since uh, DHCP v6 uh, it seems not to be so out of the box uh, system where we can just switch it on and it's running. Um, while all the other uh, capsules they are just a, a, a dual stack uh, turning on and uh, protocol is moved then from IPv6 towards IPv4. This is not a problem. Um, we have uh, squids ru running at our at our site, um, where we have uh, a proxy server and a web cache uh, uh, within these uh, squids, and um, some of the squids were deployed uh, in the early uh, earlier, and they were IPv4 only, but. Uh, down we had a downtime last last year, and they were then all uh, installed with a dual stack. And we thought that having squids installed dual stack will do the trick, but no, this was not the case. Um, we found then there is a um, there is a flag what you can set uh, within the uh, configuration files of the uh, of the squids. Um, which is then uh, pointing towards IPv6. CMS IP family prefer equal, equal six. Uh, we tested it, and it uh, it is working, at least uh, partially, since we still have 12% 12, 12 of the uh, packets which are still IPv4. Um, and uh, we, we found out that uh, this is the... Um, CMS frontiers, which are not which are not caring about this uh, this flag. Um, w one thing is that the IPv6 frontiers are going smoothly over towards IPv6 if you switch off IPv4, but we are not satisfied with this. And uh, while digging further, we found that there is a configuration file, at least for the e uh, for the experiment CMS. They have a configuration file in the XML. Uh, file where you can set their IPv uh, IP family equals six, and this is this is taking over uh, more or less everything. So we have uh, the the 64k. What's are still there? Uh, they are neglectable. Um, then we were looking to our batch processing. Uh, which is in our case HT Condor, uh, and we found that uh, the HT Condor is has quite a high r r rate on IPv6 packets, but uh, not all of it. So the la when I looked last time, this were 
uh, uh, 2.6 uh, 2.6 or 2.7 million close to 2.7 million which are, which were still IPv4 but um, these are uh, these IPv4 packets these are not uh, carrying us because these are uh, communicating uh, to the home end of the jobs which are running at our end and if the sites which are uh, submitting the jobs are not uh, going towards IPv6. We cannot do there anything, since uh, this is all this is uh, uh, like calling home for the uh, for the jobs, and um, so we we can just observe it, observe it, but uh, we cannot change it. So this is something that we have not to care about it, and we had a root uh, a rooster demon which just disappeared by uh, at least from the IPv4 protocol by the end of last year. Uh, there was then the rooster demon uh, deployed in in dual stack, and this is the central demon deployed at CERN, and. Uh, after the dual stack deployment, uh, this went very smoothly over towards IPv, uh, IPv6, and we got rid of the IPv4 per portion of it. So this is a snap. Uh, these are a few statistics uh, taken over the the last uh, last uh, time, uh, and this was until the end of last year. Uh, promising that uh, that we had 67% uh, uh, IPv uh, IPv6, but uh, this this uh, end of uh, end of last month um, we had only 54 percent. Uh, um, this is partially probably down to the uh, uh, communication to the home ends of the of the jobs, but uh, this is uh, partially probably partially on our side as well, so that we are not, not there yet and we have quite, quite some work to do. Um, the monitoring what we have will give us quite, quite a hand with, with this and we see all the ports where we still have IPv4 uh, packets coming, uh, going over and we have all the addresses. And with this, uh, we we can then, after the migration of the uh, rec managers, um, digging further and uh, going very uh, very detailed then on those issues where we still see uh, the IPv4 packets uh, going along. There is the rooster demon, which is solved, uh, but there is still one experiment, the experiment Alice, and they have a monitoring, and this uh, monitoring is uh, still uh, running over IPv4, and there seems no action that this will go towards IPv6. Um, there is NFS. NFS by uh, by itself, it is uh, protocol independent. So if you have if you are dual stack, this will go smoothly over to uh, to IPv6. Uh, but we have their dependency since uh, we have an underlying uh, protocol GPFS and NFS uh, is running on GPFS, and there are. Um, a few uh, drivers already, which are kernel drivers uh, already, who will solve this. But um, since the, these are uh, somehow experimental uh, kernel drivers, we are we, 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 we will test it very thoroughly uh, before deploying, and this has uh, has not happened yet. So this is still IPv uh, IPv4. Um, then we have the ganglia demon, which will be history while we're going to uh, the new monitoring environment. Um, we have still XRoot D running. Um, there is another uh, experiment. The exper no, this is this is the same experiment like uh, the one with the uh, monitoring port. Um, Alice, uh, which ha which uses some uh, uh, older version of XRoot D. And uh, this version of XRD are not um, IPv6 uh, compliant. Uh, so this is still one issue where uh, we have to persuade them that um, they are using the more up-to-date XRD uh, software. 
Then we have uh, the LMS, the uh, batch system, which we uh, can ignore since this is not uh, uh, this is more the ho uh, phoning home of the uh, of the um, uh, worker nodes, and this is the uh, the last uh, issue. What uh, what we have to care about, or one thing, what will keep us quite a while busy. This is uh, the DHCP v6. Um, DHCP v v6 we have not yet solved, and this will. Um, we don't know. Maybe have to either we have to wait till uh, Red Hat is uh, offering capsules, or we um, uh, have to look for a different solution for. But with this monitoring system, we have uh, a nice, a nice possibility to see what uh, what has all to be done uh, for finalizing the migration of going uh, uh, going towards IPv6. Thank you. So as you can tell, and from my personal experience, the, you know, the WLCG, it's a very complex network with many sites doing many different things. Although there's coordination, the complexities in the software they run, each experiment has its own way of doing things and different software. So it's a very complex task to try and get this towards V6 only. So are there any questions for Bruno? Um, I noticed, uh, and I hear in other talks, questions about Pixie Boot. Is, it, is that a common problem that people have? And is there any... Is Jeffrey holding his hand up there? No, oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, do you have any indication if you, from the people you've spoken to about you know, Pixie Boot actually working with V6? Is it? As a, uh, Pixie Boot it, it, it itself, it will work with V6, but you have then to have all these surroundings that are necessary for Pixie Boot. That this needs to be uh, uh, running under under IPv6 as well. And I think this is uh, this is probably more more the case since uh, as Pixie Boot itself. Okay. 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 Right. Let's uh, throw the box at Jeffrey. <laughs> all right. In your personal opinion. Let's say in two, three years, you have an IPv6 only network running over there. Do you think this will speed up the speed of science? Will we be able to do more breaking, mm. groundbreaking things and innovation? Um, no, I, th I don't think that, uh, that, that, this, that this will, I think, uh, what, what we will, uh, will achieve and what we will see out of the LHC uh, experiment. Uh, this will not be uh, any uh, sp speed wh while we're going towards IPv6, but uh, what we uh, what we have at the moment uh, within this uh, LHC environment, we have a dual stack uh, environment. In the dual stack environment, you have to do the work every time twice. One for IPv4, one for IPv6, and uh, what we are trying to do there is uh, going much, uh, much more towards IPv6 for getting at the end rid of IPv4, and uh, this is uh, this is all the the, the work w what have to be done uh, while being on th on the path there. So you're saying there's a chance by focusing on one stack, so the yeah. more time they can spend on the experiment. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think we have Dave Kelsey hiding behind the pillar, though. I think the original motivation for V6 was to enable, allow V6 only compute nodes that could then draw data from the storage nodes all around the world over V6 and to have it simplified and streamlined. I think that was the, the main idea behind things. Is that correct, Dave? Um, maybe you want to throw, <laughs> throw the box to Dave. Uh, Dave has spoken before at our Dave. events, of course. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Tim, for the prompting. Um, yes, I mean, the whole idea is to simplify, but the, the network providers, I mean, we heard from ESnet before the coffee break. I mean, the, we, are get, we have demands at CERN for the Large Hadron Collider. The next run that starts in 29 is going to be much greater amounts of data, so we need more bandwidth. And I really confidently look forward to the time when these network providers will only provide the additional bandwidth on IPv6, right? This is, 
I mean, I think there is a <laughs> this is sort of carrots that we could, as opposed to, uh, and a stick here that we could actually say that look, it's time to move to IPv6 only. The network research groups are tagging the packets to actually measure where the traffic is going for the various experiments, and it's all much more manageable if everything is on IPv6. So, so I'm I'm hoping that we will be able to do better science by going to IPv6. Right. <laughs> That's my hope. <laughs> For those without sound, that was a woohoo. Yeah. yeah, what we uh, what, what we have at our at our end, we have already everything uh, everything dual stack. So we have our complete storage uh, is reachable over IPv4 and IPv6. We have our complete uh, worker node farm uh, in in dual stack running, and we we see uh, already since. Um, uh, the major or more or less every one of the tier tier ones have moved towards a dual stack environment that we see on the uh, on the LHC OPN what I had uh, in my first slides that we see there uh, a neglectable part on traffic uh, still with IPv4 so it's it's still a little bit there but uh, it's more or less on the f on the uh, um, uh, phasing out uh, air, uh, time when uh, and we will uh, I think probably in an, uh, in a, in a uh, short uh, even in a shorter time frame uh, we will see that there is no IPv4 traffic mm. at all anymore and, and this but but this is only then the uh, the VPN which is connecting the tier ones to CERN. Yeah. With so LHC <coughs> OPN, it is a little bit. Uh, with with LHC one, it is a little bit different. There is still uh, quite a little bit more traffic on IPv4. Yeah, one of the challenges Dave's working group has been wrestling with is, you know, your dual stack at both ends. You should, in theory, be preferring v6 and using v6, but there's still many instances where, for some reason, v4 is still being used. So we saw the Dcache example. There was a, a Java. IP family preference flag. You showed two other examples of preference flags that are buried away somewhere. You need to make sure those are set the right way. So it's 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 a complex thing. And yes, um, in the UK, um, we have a tier one that connects to CERN. We have a private optical network for that. That is also, I think, two by 100 gig resilient. So that's uh, an optical network directly from RAL campus near Oxford to CERN. Um, that's something where we might at some point look to turn off v4 um, we will see but i think you know it's it's we're getting close and as i said we've got a two-day meeting uh, of the next two days where we'll look at this further so again thank you very much bruno an excellent talk and good to hear the, the good progress thank you